Yeah. Are we live? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Here. Finally. All right. After a little bit of interesting technology action, I'm not going to point any fingers to anyone, but uh, we were... Uh, we had a little technical difficulties getting this hangout going, but we're starting now, so we're going to dive right into this thing. So, Trey Radcliffe, Bell Jones, Peter Giordano, welcome to this interview slash expose of the Arcanum and what that thing is about. So, guys, welcome, welcome, and thanks for taking the time. Yeah, well, thank you, Fred. We're we're happy to be here. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, Peter, I can't hear you. By the way, you might be muted. Peter's muted. He's gone. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna proceed. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. There he is, oh, Peter Giordano. Okay, you. Peter. <laughs> Peter, while you're on the screen, let's talk up just quickly. I'm gonna do a quick roundtable. Sure. So, what is your what's your involvement with the Ar with this project, the Arcanum? And then I'm gonna move over to Trey at the end to just sort of de define what the Arcanum is. So, what is your involvement in this project? Yeah, sure. So Trey and I talked about it months and months ago, um, and I got super interested in it. And for the last several months, I've been helping both Trey and Curtis, um, working with Bell here as well, on a number of things. But mostly I'm focused on helping our masters and apprentices, which we're going to learn a whole lot more about, making sure that they've got the tools they need and that things are moving through our entire Magical Academy uh, effortlessly. Awesome, awesome. See, that's a nice teaser. That's perfect, Peter. Thank you for that. And Bill Jones, you're you're back there sitting next to Mr. Trey Radcliffe. What's your involvement in this this project? Uh, so I actually did uh, the video that some of you or most of you would have seen for the Arcanum there, and um, I'm one of the masters of myself. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Just welcome. One of our distinguished masters. We have great many masters. I'm happy to. And proud that uh, she's going into this grand adventure with us. This is cool. All right, so Trey, down to you. So let's start off this interview. First of all, thank you for taking the time to do this. This is uh, this is it's it's always awesome talking to you. You know, because you uh, you're always working on something really interesting, and this is no this is no different. So tell me what this thing is. And first of all, before you do that, for full disclosure, you and I have talked before. You invited me into the Arcanum to become a master specifically to talk about marketing and photography with a marketing slant on it so I'm involved in the Arcanum as a master right now uh, but I want to dive into this and ask you some this week in photo style under the covers type questions to figure out what this thing is about so tell us set the stage what is the Arcanum and how long have you been working on it alright let's let's go under the covers here Fred here we uh -oh. go uh oh uh, <laughs> you and me uh, well, actually, the best way to describe the Arcanum is this little uh, video that was alluded to, and maybe in the actual one you could like cut it in here magically, because uh, yes. it's a little two-minute video where I kind of describe exactly what the Arcanum is. Okay. And in the final video, in in the final version of this video, right here is where you'll <laughs> we'll have we'll have Bell Jones' amer amazing video description of the Arcanum. Thank you, Bell, for that. Yeah, thanks. That was a great video there. Nice cut job there, uh, Fred. Very well done, very professional. It's what I do. So, uh, so the whole general idea behind this is the idea that I think that the best way to learn any kind of art has really been lost through the ages of time and it's this ancient tradition of master and apprentice. This is actually how craftsmen learn to do things for you know, thousands and thousands of years, but that's been lost through mechanized education. Yeah. And now we're bringing it back kind of using modern technology because we think that having a true human connection between someone who knows a craft and someone who is desirous of knowing that craft, that human connection will take them down their own personal artistic path in a very unique, wonderful way. And so that's why we launched the Arcanum. You know, we have a variety of disciplines, uh, mostly centered around photography. And the idea that you can have uh, uh, one of these great masters be there for a one-on-one -on -one situation with you is the complete uh, antithesis. It's an anathema to the to the a lot of the uh, mechanicized or the mechanical systems that are out there right now, especially some that are even on, on the web, 
I'm not just talking about brick and mortar educational systems for for photography and art that I don't think uh, are really keeping up with the times. So we, I mean, so so keeping up with the, with the times. That's an interesting thing because we're looking at the internet, which is modern by its very nature, right? And people using the internet are learning how to do things that they never would have had a way to learn how to do before. And one of them is photography through services, you know, like lynda.com, etc. All these different services are out there where you can subscribe and you can you can learn what you want to learn from the comfort of your little home office or your laptop or sitting in Starbucks or whatever. What how I just want to I want to dive into that a little deeper. Why is you mentioned master apprentice? Why is the master apprentice model of doing things superior to me just saying, hey, I can walk into a library and consume whatever content I feel like consuming at any time for one one small fee or a fee, a monthly fee. Why why is this different and better? Hmm. Peter, why don't you take that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think that you know the the model that you just talked about is could be totally fine for a lot of people. Uh, if we look at some of the what I would call the you know online tra online training 1.0 type companies, um, they've gone through the trouble of curating a very rigid uh, curriculum, and then we'll. But what you're relegated to is watching, you know, watching that one video, consuming that one piece of content on that one particular topic. Yeah. And what what we're trying to do is something very, very different, and that is not not have people pay for access just to a rigid curriculum with one piece of content per category item, but instead have people get access to both a community of other like-minded folks, uh, a person that they can have a relationship with in terms of master apprentice, mentor apprentice, and then of course that content is there as well. And so yeah. we think this is going to be much more organic and bottoms up driven instead of a top-down type of system like you were just talking about. Now Trey, Trey, you, the, just, just for the, the watchers and the listeners of this, we, we think that Google might be doing some upgrades or whatnot to the back end of this Hangout architecture, which they didn't, uh, we didn't approve it. So no, <laughs> they, they didn't did not run they, it through us, Fred. How dare they? They didn't run it, run it through us before they decided to make the system better. So as a result, we're seeing a little hiccups um, as we record this, but we'll work through them. So Trey, did you get the question that I asked about just sort of where this, where the Arcanum sits in the grand scheme of things with the other giant libraries of content that are sitting on the internet right now? Yeah, I would say that what a lot of places on the internet that teach photography do is it's just one iteration improved on the brick and mortar system, you know, which mm -hmm. I think most of us can agree that is not a very good way to teach artistic disciplines. You know, the idea that you go to a brick and mortar school for two, three, or four years and somehow emerge magically with all the artistic skills you need to have a life of art is just redonkulous. This is something we all generally agree upon. And so the internet solution to this was to uh, get a bunch of people to make videos and dump them on places like lynda.com and uh, you know charge a certain amount per month and then you come in and you have access to thousands and thousands of videos. Well that's that's actually a fine system for a, I think a very small percentage of people that can learn in this blue sky environment. But I think a lot of people go in and they, they don't know where to start because in fact it's very inhuman. Even though they get actual, you know, really good instructors to come teach stuff mm -hmm. and they just kind of do this brain dump into a, a digital file and the, the person that's watching it really has no connection to the person that made it. It feels very mechanized, yeah. not very human. So we're kind of the opposite of that. We're going back to something that's pure, and we're taking masters, humans, and connecting them with apprentices, other humans. And yeah. it scales in a completely different way. You know, it's not this idea where you could just turn it on and have, like, thousands of people come in and, and access a huge library. This is It scales in a completely different way because it's much more bottom-up, uh, like Pete was just saying. But that, that scaling piece of it is what I want to get my brain around because there was the whole idea, remember Chris Anderson wrote the book, uh, The Long Tail, 
right? And the whole idea was you can create a giant bucket of content, some of which is not accessed very often by the 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 big part of the long tail, but but a, a significant number of people will access the remote content enough to make it viable to have it in the library. It doesn't cost you more to have the remotely accessed content than it does to have the popular content in there. So the internet itself, the model of the internet was, okay, now record companies can dump their entire libraries on there, obscure titles up to the popular Lady Gaga, whoever titles on there, and you can have access to all of them. Some won't get accessed a lot, and some will, but it will all balance out in the end. So when you talk about scaling, how does, how does the Arcanum scale to that when you're looking at, okay, you got billions of people on the planet that may potentially want to access the content. The, the metaphor or the idea of using a database makes that easy, and you're, you're moving more towards a human-to-human -human master apprentice model. How does that scale over time and serve all the people that potentially could want to take advantage of the Arcanum? Well, it scales, I think, because of our innovative and what I would argue is a fairly natural model of evolution, where mm -hmm. we seed it with just a few masters who we really trust, who we feel like we ha has the fundamental DNA. We have about 30 or so masters, and uh, you know, we have a great list of people on the website, some, yeah. some remarkable people that I really believe in, and I also thank them for believing in us and, and the whole effort. But each master, we'll just get down to brass tacks, each master has 20 apprentices, okay? And so these 20 apprentices, they spend a fair amount of time with the master, especially in the critiques. You know, we kind of have this leveling system, so on and so forth. And every five levels, like level five, level 10, level 15, level 20, you have this big critique session with your master, which is not unlike this hangout session, where you go into the critique and you, you take your 10 or 15 photos and the master will critique the sort of the technical aspects of it, like, you know, what kind of, lens did you use and and uh, what kind of camera and ISO and aperture and these sort of these sort of technical settings and they'll also address sort of the artistic side of it the the composition and the subject matter and this sort of thing mm -hmm. so in this way you're gonna have these very few masters teaching uh, apprentices at about 20 a pop and over time these people will level up these apprentices will level up and some of them uh, may be very skilled. Like if you look at a bell curve of people, there's going to be some that are pretty skilled, of course. And some of these pe people may be desirous of becoming masters themselves. And there's a little sidetrack they go on. But if we think they're going to be a good master, then they can jump up and they can go grab another 20 people um, off of our waiting list. So in this way, it's bottom up. We don't have a, a big like you know a big corporate group that's deciding who does each and every little thing. This starts small, and not that it's like a religion or anything, but it does grow like a religion because religions can grow and reach tens, hundreds, millions of people, mm -hmm. and it's all bottom up. It's friends telling friends about it, this sort of thing, and this long tail situation that you talked about. Actually, that model works kind of well on the internet, uh, having you know just a little bit of content that gets accessed uh, rarely over time uh, that yeah. can pay off, but that doesn't work. I think for art and photography because it's inherently inhuman and you don't have um, the, the good kind of connection that you do to a, a master who's actually getting to know you and guiding you down your own personal artistic path. So I think that the humanness of, of what we're building here uh, really makes it unique and it, it scales on a very human, natural, evolutionary manner. All right, so both both you and Peter mentioned the bottom-up sort of metaphor for the Arcanum, and a lot of people will say, okay, bottom-up, that is reminiscent of the pyramid model. You know, there's that whole idea of the people at the bottom are paying for the people at the top. You know, is is, is tell me about that. I mean, it's just, just being completely transparent, is that sort of, a, or at least a portion of that built into the business model that is the Arcanum? Yeah, go ahead, Pete. We can both talk about this, but I know yeah. that you're you're working on the model and stuff, and yeah, sure. We have all of our lasers. A Sorry, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. I think I think it's top of mind. Uh, I do want to make one comment just to address because I think these things tie together. And Frederick, you were saying, well, you know, if you're using if this is a more human approach, and how are you going to make this scale? And Trey gave yeah. a great example of why we're doing it through a human method. But I think what's important is it's not that we're not using technology. But technology is at its best 
when it simply gets out of the way. Mm -hmm. And so our choices are important <clears throat> in that it preserves the connection between that apprentice, <clears throat> excuse me, the apprentice and, and the master. And then what's even more important is between the apprentice and its their own cohort, those other 19 apprentices that they're on this journey with. And so I want to be clear that this is, I think, to be able to bring this model back was dependent on high technology, right? Yeah. Um, mobility platforms, you know, ubiquity of internet access and so on and so forth. We couldn't do it without technology, but when it gets out of the way and we focus on that human connection, that's where things really change. So just wanted to cap that one off. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so on, on the pyramid, I think it's easy to just go call it a pyramid or Ponzi or whatever and just you know try to take that word. And it's often used around things people don't have a great understanding of. And the answer here is, is that most of these pyramid schemes are predicated on the fact that um, you've got to go, you know, go recruit your customers to go sell. And then mm -hmm. those customers have to buy product that they and then have to go turn other customers into sellers. And it just keeps on going without, um, without the company making money when no one else is selling. And that's, right. that's not the case here. Right. And the case that we have is, is really, quite frankly, takes that model and flips it completely upside down. Where we have you know, our mission around the Arcana is to help individuals achieve their own goals around mastery of whatever art it might be. And we're starting mm -hmm. in this visual arts area. And so our mission and goal is aligned with that of an apprentice, which is to reach that level of mastery, which is their own path, and that of a teacher, our master, right? To help that student, help that apprentice reach that level of mastery, that goal. And so in this way, we've created a system where we think that all of our goals from the business to our, you know, our mission, the master and the apprentice are all aligned. Now yeah. that is, that is said, we do are using the word business. And so we are going to charge a fee for access to this, this great service, this great content community and access to the brains and brawn of these special masters. And so, but that funding goes toward running the business, and creating an upward spiral like Trey is talking about so we can support the masters and the apprentices with the right tools for the community and the content. And that's, so, and that's so really Paint a picture of how that works. So there's a, there's a master apprentice, so the masters are in there, and masters are, are, are getting paid through the contributions that come from the apprentices. So, and then the, the apprentices could ascend to become a master and then get to a level where they could also be paid and have 20 apprentices under them. Tell me about the revenue. How, how does the revenue piece work? How much are these apprentices paying monthly? Is it a one-time fee? Is it a monthly fee? And what are they paying? And then what do the masters get from that? And then can the masters move up and make more money? Just, just sort of demystify that whole revenue piece of this. Trey, do you want me to take a crack, or do you want to jump in, or how do you want to do it? Yeah, I'll say something really fast, uh, sure. and then you can, you can talk more about the, the businessy side of it. Is that well, primarily, um, I don't want to get super bogged down in the financial stuff, sure. but uh, I would say that the 30 masters we're starting with, and by the way, when people fill out applications, which we just opened it up a few days ago, and we're already like right. way over our target. We have tons of masters that have applied to that want to start right out as a master, so we That's think cool. we'll be able to scale it up pretty quickly. Because I think inherently, um, mas the masters that come in, they just enjoy teaching, and they, they like uh, giving this gift, and they like connecting with, uh, with other people and doing it in sort of an efficient way, because I think a lot of masters know, and it's my theory, that the knowledge that's in their heads is extremely valuable. And there just hasn't been a good way to unlock it. Currently, the way you unlock the value of the knowledge in a master's head is like you go to a workshop, right? But this right. is incredibly inefficient and hard because you have to get a bunch of human bodies like, like Rick Salmon, for example, who's one of, the, one of the masters. You actually have to go to Connecticut or wherever, wherever he is up in the Northeast. You have to you know, fly there and get a hotel. So you have to get your brain near his brain in physical proximity in order to, to get the knowledge out of it. I mean, this is a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? Now, he can also make videos and put them on the web. And he does this kind of stuff. But then there's not a very human connection. So the idea is that this is a very valuable service that we're building, this idea that uh, we can give you a personal connection to masters that will help you down your path. And of course there's going to be compensation for the masters. 
and I, I believe, I truly believe that this could be, uh, you know, one of the great things that uh, uh, helps uh, uh, masters be, uh, you know, a much more uh, financially viable thing rather than just scrounging around for workshops or putting up videos or ebooks or, you know, having, like I know how little lynda.com actually pays you to go there and, and do videos and they, they just turn them up on their, on their big machine. So this is a totally different way of doing it. Uh, we do have a monthly fee. And, uh, and this kind of stuff, but uh, you know, it ensures that uh, only serious people are coming in. And yeah, I don't think that filter. any of the apprentices will ever begrudge uh, the master for, for making money from teaching them something that's so important to their life. And what, what's, what's the fee for, the, to, for an apprentice to be involved? Go ahead, Pete. You can go through the whole yeah. model there. Yeah, sure. So if you look at the arcanum.com on the website, We've published an introductory price of $29.97 a month, which we think is in line with other services that only offer access to, to content. And again, what we're offering is this access to, again, these, these very talented and accomplished professionals that are our masters. And yeah. then, once again, not just the content, but also that community, that very closely tight-knit cohort, which is going to go on this path together. And so that's what that initial that initial fee is, and then you know you're and asking. By the way, about, Pete, let me jump in there and say that you know I know there's a lot of conferences and things that you go to where you will go and you pay to get a critique. You might pay like ninety bucks to get a critique. Yeah. yeah. But here you go. You know, you you not just get one critique and you're just sent out of the room like a, a failed American Idol uh, contestant <laughs> just trying to try out. Uh, but you know, you, you've got a, a lifelong connection with this master, and they're going to see the progress you make. As you go from level five to level ten to level fifteen, they're gonna hopefully your work will get better over time based on the advice they give you. And so, I mean, this is a a, a fraction of that cost. Uh, what a deal, I say. Yeah. <laughs> and it is I mean, just to underscore what Trey is saying. I mean, if, Frederick, I think you can get the sense that this is an incredibly personal experience that you have when you go through this type of learning. Mm -hmm. It. It's very, very different than, which again is okay for some people, but to download that one video, then the next video, then the next video, and just you know consume ad nauseum, um, this gives you access at a level that just hasn't happened before. Even, even some of the more, I would say, like live type events where folks get together and so forth, that's a very, a very small fraction of time. And then mm -hmm. everybody goes their separate ways. And this is about keeping a connection with a person, master apprentice, throughout their artistic path. And the, the compensation models that we've put in place for our masters are aligned with that, right? Where masters are compensated and they are rewarded for helping the apprentices achieve their goals. Okay. So then, so then let's just segue that into selection, both on the, the master side and on the apprentice side. So the first 30... Can either of you guys just sort of talk to the what were the selection processes in place for <clears throat> sort of for selecting the first thirty masters that are in there, and then each of the masters can choose, or by some process of selection, twenty people are assigned to that master. How does that piece happen? Can you can you either of you take me through that? I have a funny. I mean, just like all good businesses, it just was written down on a napkin at breakfast. <laughs> It's, it's like the Facebook algorithm, right? <laughs> yeah. Trey, Trey, that one's that's your that's one that's in your yeah. Corner. No, we've got a we've got a really smart way, I think, of connecting uh, apprentices and masters because it's not like there's an algorithm that hooks you up randomly with a master. Yeah. Because it is such a personal thing. We want to make the selection process super personal. And so, um, you know, when you come to the arcanum.com and fill out an application which of course is free, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, you, know, you, you enter a waiting list, which is also free, and you don't actually start paying until a master selects you. And that's actually what happens, is that when you fill out your application, you write some stuff about yourself, and you say, like, well, what, what disciplines are you into? Are you into landscape or portrait or model or fashion or yeah. whatever? You can make multiple checkboxes if you're interested in multiple things. And you can put some links to some of your work or... There's some freeform areas where you can kind of write largely what you what you kind of want out of your artistic life or what you're struggling with, and then the masters come in and they see uh, they see a big group of the waiting list, 
and like they can sort it like Rick Salmon, for example. I don't know why I keep bringing him up. He's such a good example. He can sort He's a through of and just, just look at the landscape people if he wants to take a group of 20 people that are going to be his landscape. So he'll go through and he'll just pick 20 people that he personally wants to teach. It's like yeah. it's like fantasy football or something. So you get to pick your, your 20 people. And maybe he'll pick people that are total beginners because that's often very rewarding for masters to teach people that are total beginners. Or maybe he'll want people that do a certain kind. Whatever he wants, those 20 people that he picks, it's guaranteed that he really wants to teach them and level them up. And so once he selects them, they'll get a little email saying, hey, you've been invited in. A master has selected you. And then, and then that's when the, the payment begins. And you come in and you start... Uh, you start leveling up, and of course, I, there, I see a question here. There's lots of questions pouring in. It's hard for me to concentrate on multiple things. Yeah. Uh, but I, the question here's a question from Michael Bonacore. He says, well, "How long, on average, does it take to level up to uh, level 20?" Mm -hmm. This kind of goes hand in hand with that thing I just said. So we, you know, when you pick 20 people, there will be a bell curve. There'll be like some people who are super overachievers and really get into it and, and try to level up quick and do all the challenges with their class and, and do a lot of peer reviews and go through their critique sessions and have a great time. So some people level up very quickly. Maybe we don't know how long it will take to hit level 20. Maybe two or three months for like super overachievers, maybe four or five or six months for, for other people. Uh, the speed doesn't really matter. And that's kind of why we're going into this, this beta session to, to find out uh, actually how this works in practice because we're building something totally organic you know we don't this isn't like world of warcraft that we're building we're just automating you know you go talk to the innkeeper then you go down into the cellar and kill 10 rats and then you're level two you know it's not like this automated ridiculous system um, it's totally organic so as the master has these people go up to level 20 he can go grab new people off the waiting list and come up so it's almost like he's a college football coach and there's always like fresh talent coming in and then for the people that do reach level 20, we hope to have sort of like expansion packs to go back to the gaming uh, idea uh, for them cool. as well. I have a feeling that you... Constantly stimulated. I have a feeling that you have gaming in your blood somewhere, Trey. I, I don't uh, know. <laughs> no, no, I know absolutely. Unapologetically, I love games. I like uh, fantasy fiction and Hogwarts and The Name of the Wind and all this stuff. So, you know, I want to take these really fun elements and put them into the Arcanum because, you know, we... We certainly take this stuff very seriously, but we also want to have fun with it. And, uh, you know, art can be taken seriously, and it can also not be taken uh, too seriously at all. So we're really, we're doing this because we love it. Um, and you know this, Fred, I'll take a step back and say that we, uh, you know, Stuck in Customs, that's the main website, it got, it started doing really well a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't really, like, consume a lot. I have enough uh, money to, like, buy cameras and travel. That's kind of, like, for my family, it's, that's good enough. So now when we make decisions, like building the Arcanum, we don't do it for the money. We do it for the awesome. And I just think this sounds like the most awesome thing. I wish when I was learning photography that I had a future me that I could talk to that could <laughs> save me from all these mistakes and, and give me all kinds of advice and help me down my own path more quickly than I would have otherwise. So it just seems like an awesome thing to do, and uh, we're, we're making it fun. Well, looking, looking at it from that standpoint, like if you, Trey, when you were just starting out, you had a future you to, to hold your hand and explain to you, you no, this is what an f-stop is, not that, you know. If you, if you had that person back then, could the Arcanum translate into other disciplines that could possibly use a future, say... You know, you know, painter or a future whatever. You know, can the, in other words, can the Arcanum translate out of just strict photography disciplines and into other creative endeavors? Well, yes, absolutely. This idea of master to apprentice doesn't need to be relegated to only photography because any kind of craftsmanship that can benefit from a master apprentice relationship could fall under this domain. So we're getting started in a, in a pretty focused way with just photography, um, but there is one exception. We do ha we are trying one other thing, and I'll let Bell describe it thusly. Bell Jones, hello, you're on. <laughs> so I'll be the one exception, and I'll be doing hand drawn art. So um, across a variety of different me uh, mediums that I use, from pen to paint to oils um, and sharing that with the apprentices that I will be having under me. 
Yeah, Very cool. You've never done anything quite like this, have you? What, what's kind of driven you to want to be a master? Well, I think, well, obviously, this is a very new thing for me, but to be able to share what I'm passionate about with people who are equally interested and passionate and to be able to help them grow and um, find their special little niche that they're that they're into, it's mm -hmm. it'll be really special to me and really exciting. And I love to see people get stoked and um, explore and discover something new that maybe they never would have been able to before. Yeah. Now, Bill, I see I see you're wearing Google Glass there. Can yeah. you and Trey, you know, and Peter, you can jump in as well. Explain how how and I've seen a lot of the videos, and I have some Google Glass as well. Explain how Google Glass is incorporated into the Arcanum. What's it, what's it there for? Um, yeah, I'll describe that real quick. So it's not sure. required. You know, that video that you see is very glass heavy, and that's one of the first things. Oh my God, do it's I have glassy. to have Google Glass to participate <laughs> in the Arcanum? Well, of course not. Now, some of our masters uh, have glass, and it just turns out that that's a really cool way to teach because. You know, you can make these videos, and you get to see your hands on the camera. You get to see you change lenses, how you adjust it, how you compose. Because you can actually talk about composition while you're wearing glass, and you can see the composition in the glass. Yeah. So, I mean, it's an amazing uh, tool for teaching uh, on so many levels. And so a lot of the masters now are starting to make a lot of videos, and they're, they're pumping them into the Arcanum. So this sort of this first-person view, like personally, uh, I'm putting about 30 videos into the Arcanum uh, when I've been out on location shooting with glass. It's just such an efficient way, and really, it's a very personal connection uh, to uh, to kind of dictate this stuff that's that's happening right in front of you. Now, I do think we're moving into a world where people are going to be wearing these head-mounted computers quite often. I think they probably won't look like this current Google Glass, mm -hmm. um, even though I think this one looks totally cool. Uh, but I think that uh, the next versions will be more and more invisible. There might be many people that are making these sorts of things. Uh, but yeah, this idea that we can all be connected and have shared vision, that's kind of like version the next version of the Arcanum that we're working on. Uh, the idea that you can just share vision live with your master or your fellow apprentices, I mean, it's the most awesome thing ever. If, if I had like all these incoming messages saying like, oh, all my fellow apprentices, they're out shooting right now or they have questions and and I can tune in and see what they're seeing live as it's happening. This is my mm -hmm. core group of like my mm -hmm. little 20 people. I mean, how exciting and awesome is that? And all, we, yeah. all we're doing, you know, Fred, we haven't invented anything new here at all. We're just synthesizing pieces that were already out there into a contiguous whole that makes sense. And, that, and that's, that's a perfect segue because I want to talk about the infrastructure a little bit. So you mentioned lynda.com. They built an entire database site experience, library of Congress, if you will, of training for people on anything from Excel all the way up to Photoshop and Motion and all this stuff. So whatever you want to know, you could, you could go into the, the Linda library and learn all this stuff. On the, on the Arcanum side, and they, they built it, um, I'm assuming, from the ground up. On the Arcanum side, looking at it from the outside in, it looks like it's built on existing tools, right? So we're using, using Google Glass, which is a built, has a built-in infrastructure through Google+, Plus, using Google+, Plus Hangouts for a lot of the interactions and, and private groups within Google+, Plus for the for the master apprentice sort of relationships, which is brilliant. I mean, you're building on top of an in infrastructure that's already there. So I want to talk about that a little bit and your mindset, Trey, of, of building it on the Google infrastructure. And then, as I'm known to do, the devil's advocate piece of it is, like we experience today with Google making changes to Hangouts while we're trying to do this, you're kind of at the at the whim of this giant entity that could change things underneath you and disrupt your business model. So I want to have you address that and if you see that as a concern. So take the first piece first, your mindset behind using Google Plus as an infrastructure for the Arcanum. Yes, well obviously I really believe in Google and you know I believe in the the people at Google, people behind it, you know, Vic and Bradley and Sergey and and the whole team. I mean, they're just uh I think that they're just world killers. They're doing a great job. Yeah. And of course, they're constantly iterating and improving this stuff. But they make so many incredible services that we can just layer this on top of. It's ridiculous for us to rebuild our own forums when they have these amazing private communities. 
Um, and we'll just take that as a, as a quick example. So yeah. if anyone's ever been to a photography workshop, then you know you might actually go to the photography workshop for the purposes of meeting the, the guy that's putting it on or the, or the gal that's putting it on. But then what ends up happening is you end up making friends with everyone else at the workshop, and you get as much out of them sometimes as you do the teacher. So I think the same thing is going to happen here inside the Arcanum, that they're going to come for the master, but they're going to end up finding 19 fellow apprentices that also share uh, the kind of stuff they want to do. And so a great way to share this stuff would be inside of a, a private community, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so like, uh, you know, there's a Dave Cross, for example, uh, the Dave Cross, his mastery cohort, where these 20 people will come in there and they'll be sharing photos, they'll be preparing for their critiques. Uh, Dave will be putting his favorite videos into, the, into there. Um, we'll be using like Google Hangouts just like this because it's really easy to share your screen it's automatically recorded to YouTube. And so as all these masters are out there creating these critique uh, sessions, they're all going to be available not only to the fellow apprentices, but all across the Arcana. And I don't know about you, but I would just love to sit there and watch critiques all day long. I love mm -hmm. watching other people get critiques. And I don't always agree with the, what the judges say because it's subjective, but it's always interesting to hear what they say subjectively about such a subjective subject. And so. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a tremendous tool. So there's no need for us to build this stuff um, if Google's already doing a great job and constantly improving it. Yeah. And then, okay, then I'll say address the second part of the question, which would be, okay, it's awesome. Everything Google's doing, I agree with you. It's, it's amazing, that, and they're giving it away for free, et cetera. Amazing infrastructure that's already in place that you can use. But then what happens when... Some, I mean, you're building, you're building a arguably a large business on top of someone else's land, you know, and yeah. they can decide, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build apartment complexes there. I'm done, and which could disrupt what you're doing. Have you taken yeah. that into account, or are you worried about that at all? No, I'm not worried about um, Google having extended downtime or anything like that. I think that uh, you know you got to pick your partners in life. You, mm -hmm. Even if we did it all, we'd be depending on uh, rack space and our own coders and. You know, I'd rather count on Google than me building my own giant engineering team to build a, a system that does ostensibly the same thing as Google, but probably less, probably not as good. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I believe in these guys, and there'll be a little bit of downtime, a little bit of problems, so on and so forth. But I mean, it's all going in one direction. Um, I think it's, I think it's all right. That's cool. You know, I'll add on that, just Frederick. Um, I just think the experience has been so much better too. Google, not only do they have these different services, but they've done a great job of integrating them, right? Mm -hmm. Mail and Hangouts and communities, the events, everything more or less just flows together. And so I think it'll create for a really simple experience for the participants in the Arcanum. Okay. And it is, is, is the Arcanum sort of only on Google+. Plus. In, in other words, will we see Arcanum content surface on Twitter or Facebook, or are you trying to keep it corralled into the Google+, Plus ecosystem? No, it, it's only on Google+, Plus because when you create an application, actually this is coming in the next version of the application creation, and people who already created an application, we're already getting so many requests, people want to go edit their app and their <laughs> application and make a few changes, this, this sort of thing. So we're going to tie it to a Google+, Plus account. And of course, all the masters are tied to Google+, Plus account. Mm -hmm. And so much of what we do kind of requires this integration because of uh, the YouTube integration for the video creation. Uh, when people have glass, the way that you can connect automatically through Google+, uh, the way the communities work, um, you know, it's just, we're just going to keep it simple. And, you know, it's free. It's not that hard yeah. to create a Google+, Plus account. Uh, right. I would say that uh, it already looks like 90% of the people that put in applications already have a Google account. So um, we don't think it's onerous at all, and uh, it's just sort of like getting in the door. You know, that kind of stuff gets out of the way after a while once you learn how to use it, and I know not everyone's totally familiar with it, but it's pretty dang easy. Once you learn how to use it, you know how to use it, and then before you know it, you're going to be thinking much more about the, the humans that are there in your apprentice group and, uh, you know, your, your master. So you're going to start yeah. thinking about the relationships with the other people and stop thinking about the technology. Okay, so, so I'm going to wrap it up here. So one other question was Google, again, in the Google vein. Google recently, I guess a couple of weeks ago or whatever, announced a product called Helpouts, Google Helpouts, where people can go, you know, and, and say I want to train someone on marketing. I could go and set up a Helpout page where I can then offer for pay, people can then, 
you know, hire me is kind of like remote consulting. So that is in a way similar without the community aspects of the Arcanum. Can you address that and how it's different? Maybe Peter, you can take that. How is that? How is how are Google Helpouts different than what you guys are doing with the Arcanum? Well, I think I think it's going to be great for us in terms of Google putting more skin in the game around making these one-to-one -one connections. I think they're on to the same thing that that we are with the Arcanum. Um, I, we don't see it really as competitive at this point because I think this is more of a tactical, one-off kind of emergent kind of I need this skill or I need this help on this one thing right here and now. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that that's going to help us in terms of driving awareness and marketing around these types of Google services, and it'll give us an opportunity to offer and show people an offer what we have around you know the Arcanum. So I think that there's a place for helpouts, um, but I think that Google you know Google likes to test. Gmail was in beta for four years, five years, yeah. and they like to test, and that's what they're doing. We we love that, and because they're innovating and they're moving forward, and so. I think overall it's going to be net positive for us, and I don't think it's going to really affect our business in a negative way. That's cool. Hey, uh, Pete, speaking of uh, iteration and making quick changes, we're, we're kind of able to do this too, and uh, I know we've all been looking at the applications that come in and stuff like this, and we saw there was a huge demand for um, street photography, which we didn't really expect. And yeah. So we, uh, yeah, tell, tell people about that. They might find that interesting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, Trey, Trey, at the beginning, he mentioned that um, we were flooded with, with applications. And if you check out thearcanum.com, you'll see we've got seven disciplines today, six photography, and, of course, like we were talking about the hand-drawn art. And this is just one of the many you know, beautiful things about being small, early, nimble, and fast with a really big vision is that we can make some of these changes on the fly. And so um, one of the things that, that came up while we're looking at these applications that are coming in is there was this groundswell around street photography, which we didn't have in our initial set of seven disciplines. And so we had heard through the network, you know, Frederick, I know you've had this woman on your show as a, as a co-host, Valerie Jardin, many, many times. And um, so she submitted an an application now to be a master and so one of the decisions we've made is that we're going to add in street photography as a key discipline at launch and so that's just again it's one of the great things about this you know the amount of interest that's being generated around this and then our ability to act on it very quickly and do it and make it all just more awesomer for all the people involved so it's startup yeah it's it's definitely startup and nimble so then okay so on that so with with you know you mentioned you guys mentioned that there's been a flood of applications coming in from all over the world and all that so how and Trey you alluded to the fact that you've surpassed the targets that you'd set give me give us a little clarity around that so what is what does that mean you said it like Peter did you set a target at a hundred and you got a thousand or <laughs> what are we looking at what does success look like in these early days of the Arcana yeah, no, we, we set really big targets because we're very uh, aggressive, um, and we totally blew through them. Uh, we're basically taking applications now through the beginning of January, so okay. we're going to have like way more than we know what to do with. But this is actually a really good problem, and it will goad us into maybe scaling um, mm -hmm. or building this thing as quickly as possible because everyone really wants in. You know, I think... Yeah. Uh, this idea of master and apprentice does it appeal to everybody? Some people just want to sit there on the on YouTube and or on Lynda.com and look at videos, but I think it does appeal to a lot of people. Um, I'm glad they they see the vision and believe in us. Now we have to deliver, and so the thing is going to happen is around the beginning of the year we're going to officially start it up, right? And so we're going to have you know our first group of masters go pick their apprentices, and we're going to test it. And you know I'll, I'll give a little my little Dumbledore type. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> commencement address to to people in the Arcanum, and I'll just be super frank and honest. I say, look, we are no one has ever done anything like this. Uh, we're going to build this as we go. We'll probably make a lot of mistakes. Okay, we're going to iterate. This is very much a bottom up thing. We're going to be constantly talking to our masters, me and Pete and Curtis and the rest of the team, and you know, saying, okay, how much time is it taking you per week? Uh, uh, you know, uh, what's going on with the students? Uh, so we really want to test how this thing scales up and then how long does it take for an apprentice that wants to become a master to become a master some yeah. of these masters that have already applied you know how can we 
maybe fast track them in so that we could take more people off the waiting list. But we want to be really responsible and iterative because we're definitely going to make mistakes. Uh, this has never really been tried before, but it just makes too much sense to have a network of masters and apprentices that are all in this together. So, you know, we really pray and ask for people's patience. And maybe if you're not an early adopter, you don't want to come in right now uh, and let us iron some of this stuff out first. But we're going to get there because uh, we're really excited about it. And uh, we're really at, just so deeply honored for people that have applied. And, and uh, we're excited for the masters to get started. And, and uh, we just want it all right now. But we're going to try to be yeah. responsible and grow it organically and, and uh, be smart about it. Love it. Love it. So then, the energy level. I was just gonna say the energy level, Frederick, is it's just it's off the charts, right? People are flocking to this because I think I think it was an unmet need, and people yeah. are seriously energized and quite frankly anxious about getting in. And so we're yeah. we're delighted and we're humbled by the outpouring of interest. So we're just uh, cool. we just want to deliver now. Well, congratulations, guys. I mean, it's, yeah, like you said, it's uh, definitely innovative. And, you know, you talk about from a, a training or marketing standpoint, there's the whole idea of the different learning styles. And it's the, you know, people can learn from books or they can learn from videos or they learn better in a teacher classroom environment. This master apprentice thing, guys, it seems like this was almost, you know, in the the Indiana Jones Ark of the Covenant, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, let's crack this thing open, and here's this new learning style that is actually old, that is new again through the use of technology that you guys are sort of dusting off and making new again. So congratulations. It's uh, it's exciting. So what's, what's next? So if people are watching this, whether now or in the future, and they're like, okay, this is awesome, I want to be involved somehow, whether as a master or as an apprentice or something, where do they go to get the gist and the lowdown on what this project is and how they can be involved in it? Yeah, so I would just direct people to the website, which is thearcanum.com, T-H-E-A-R-C-A-N-U-M.com. Mm -hmm. This name, by the way, comes from one of my favorite books called The Name of the Wind. Uh, if you read this book, you'll kind of be a personal friend. You'll get a level up in that territory. But <laughs> yeah, if, they, if they come to the website, we've got lots of really good information there and a, a nice little video. And, and we also have a fact that answers a lot of these questions. By the way, I, Fred was going to start this hangout and he was going to have this questions interface. I started the questions. There's so many questions pouring in. I pasted them into chat there, Fred. It's, it's off the charts. But what I'm going to endeavor to do is take our existing fact and go through these and, you know, try to coalesce them into some, some uh, questions and update yeah. the fact with all these questions. Uh, and I love that there's so many questions because this kind of hits people out of, out of the left field. They're like, whoa, well, what about this and what about that? Because it's, yeah. it's just an unfamiliar model. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of fact type stuff on there. We have uh, sort of our core values, like, you know, what is grounding us in this, you know, because we, we've given this a lot of thought, you know, the, the basic philosophical premises behind this. You know, why are we doing this? Why are you doing this? Why would a master do it? Why would an apprentice do it? Because we want people to come in, especially in the beginning, with, you know, the purest of motivations. You know, the desire to teach, the desire to learn, the desire to get better with art. And so this is, we think if we start out this core group of, you know, unfortunately just several hundreds of people, even though the waiting list is many orders of magnitude bigger. If we just start out this core group with the right DNA and the right behavior and the right mean, this system will self-replicate and grow itself over time like a natural organism. So yeah. this is this is our desire, and I hope you get this sense when you visit the website. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, one of the reasons why I'm involved in in the Arcanum is is exactly what you said, Trey. It's not it's not monetary for me and it's not, you know, I I self-aggrandizing or I want to build a giant audience. It's more I like to train people. I like to teach the stuff that I know specifically about marketing and photography and that's what I want to do and I think that is a contribution that I can make to the Arcanum and to that community is specifically from that from that vector of okay I'm a photographer how do I market myself how do I use Facebook Google Plus Twitter email marketing all that stuff so I'm looking forward to like what you just said it's just a it's not it's not it's not a hundred percent altruistic of course because nothing in life generally is unless you're a nun or a priest right <laughs> but it's still I would like to give give what I know and 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 just sort of give it out and be compensated in return and have that 
that cold fusion ecosystem of training and learners and all that stuff, and not to mention the feedback in the community that goes along with it. So it's exciting. It's fun stuff. I dig it. All right. Well, thank you. Cool. All right. Well, awesome. So this is this is I got through all the stuff that I want to ask, and again, to the folks that are watching this and or listening to this. We had some glitches in the back end, which is why we switched over to Trey's account to do the Hangout. I wasn't able to see the questions right away, but Peter, I imagine, is going to take those questions <laughs> that have come in <laughs> and somehow yeah. synthesize them into a post somewhere and with a Q&A that will probably be about three miles long, <laughs> and we'll get those answered offline. So thanks, guys. Bell Jones... Peter Giordano, and, of course, Mr. Trey Radcliffe. Thanks for uh, for jumping into this Hangout to answer these questions about the Arcanum. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, bet. You, thank you, Fred. Thank See ya. You. All right. See you, guys. Take care. Okay, I'm about to click stop broadcast, but i got to lean up. Okay, now I see it.